Hi everyone, my name is Andre. I'm a researcher at the University of Manchester, and this is the second video on publishing in top tier IEEE journals. In the previous video, I discussed some high level general aspects of publishing process in the top tier IEEE journals. We discussed how to analyze the quality of IEEE journals, uh, who should publish and why in these journals, the timing of publication and so on. In this video, I want to, to focus on very specific advice for improving the quality of manuscripts submitted to such journals to maximize their chances of being accepted. Why do I want to discuss this topic? Well, first of all, as I said in the previous video, I just had recently my manuscript accepted in IEEE Transactions on Smart Grid, a very top, very prestigious journal in the power systems research. And I had a very lengthy process of nine months I mean, from the initial submission and till the acceptance. So this is why I want to share this experience and advice and tell you more about how challenging this process is. And second, I have been invited many times to work as a reviewer in top tier IEEE journals. So I can discuss here some common problems that many manuscripts, including my work, have when they are submitted and reviewed in IEEE journals. And I want to discuss ways of avoiding specific problems and improving uh, chances of your manuscripts of being accepted in such top tier IEEE journals. All right, let's move to the tips for producing high quality papers. And let me say that I want to share in this video my personal experience uh, with a specific focus on my recently accepted paper and examples from that manuscript. In this video, I prepared for you several statements, several simple messages. And let me start with this very simple and bold uh, statement that people do not like to read text. Uh, even nowadays, in 2023, sometimes I see recently published papers with no figures at all. Sometimes just very few figures, just pure text, pure discussion of some topic. And to me, such papers are very boring even to read. Maybe this works for some theoretical fields, but this doesn't work in engineering. In engineering, your figures and your diagrams are the face of your paper, and therefore you should dedicate extra time, extra effort to improve the quality of your pictures. I know that the topic of developing high quality figures for papers is very broad. There are many things to discuss here, like developing vector-based uh, images, not pixelated low quality images, and so on. Maybe I will make a separate video about that one day. But the main thing that I want to say in this video is that the, the figures are the essence of uh, engineering papers and therefore you should be thinking about your next manuscript in terms of figures. What I mean by that is that you should be thinking about the structure of your manuscript, not only in terms of sections and text that you will put there, but also in terms of figures. For example, you should think what figures, what interesting figures can I show in the introduction? How will I visualize my approach? Uh, what diagrams will I use in the modeling section? What figures will I use to present my results and so on? And if you think in this way, it helps a lot to develop an interesting structure and incorporate many useful figures in the manuscript. And one more message that I want to discuss here uh, regarding the quality of the papers is that we want our manuscripts to look professional. And I will reiterate this many times today because I believe that these uh, low quality tables, low quality figures do not help uh, manuscripts to look professionally. And from my experience, whenever reviewers in top tier IEEE journals see that your manuscript is not looking professional, they start thinking that maybe you are not professional and you are in trouble at this point because your work will be attacked from different angles. They will ask a lot of questions. And if you collect many negative reviews from two, three reviewers, your paper have high chances of being rejected. And we want to avoid that, of course. So uh, my second message is that we need to develop our papers in a way that they look very, very professional. And the first thing to start with is improving the quality of the figures. Speaking about the quality of the figures, uh, I want to show you two extreme cases. Uh, the first thing that I see in some papers are very simplistic figures that do not help your paper. And let me give you an example. In my field, uh, many uh, teams uh, study active distribution networks, 
cloud technologies for distribution networks and they say that they have this cloud technology internet of things and that everything is interconnected in the network and in at the beginning of the paper i saw many images which look you know like the cloud it is said that this is cloud technology and many many devices and basically everything is interconnected we see many many arrows in different directions and even though the authors put such figures in the paper it doesn't really help because the only thing it says is that look there is a technology and everything is interconnected which is a little bit strange and confusing and my point here is that do not add very simplistic figures without specific details that do not help readers and reviewers to understand uh, your framework and your research so try to make your figures more specific but then let me show you another extreme i saw recently papers published with overly overly complex uh, figures and here i have some examples uh, to show you so let me open this figure it is from paper published in 2023 paper is about transmission and distribution networks and you can see that the authors uh, use this figure to explain their modeling framework i don't want to say that this figure is very bad and i'm not saying that this research is not professional but i just want to show you an example that such figures can be very confusing because it has too many components if you count the number of blocks in this figure the number of dashed lines and arrows it is so confusing to understand what is going on here and for example where is the beginning of this uh, picture should we go from the left to right or top to bottom uh, quite a lot of elements and also imagine that this will be put let's say in a single column format so it will be really hard to understand what is going on here readers will need to zoom in a lot even to read this uh, diagram but this is not uh, the worst example let me show you this picture again from recently accepted paper in 2023 uh, this uh, figure i believe is too much it has a lot of components and again the font is extremely small so you cannot read it uh, when you see the paper you need to zoom in a lot and then you try to analyze how this framework works is it going from left to right or from top to bottom let me also mention that such figures violate some design principles for example too many colors are used here you should use two maximum three different colors in your figures also the font is really small the designing rule is that you should use fonts in the figure uh, that are comparable with the size of the text in the in the main text in the main manuscript but uh, here you should zoom in a lot so uh, this is what i'm saying about that some figures are overly complex and they have too many components which uh, which is very confusing for readers and reviewers and uh, i'm showing these pictures to demonstrate that even nowadays people submit papers with very complex and confusing diagrams that do not really help uh, your manuscript so we want to avoid such pictures uh, if preparing manuscripts for top tier ieee journals as we can see from these examples developing high quality figures for ieee papers is a very complex task but let me tell you that not only your figures should be high quality figures beautiful figures they also should be unique and this is another message that i want to share today that try to make your research and your figures unique which means that try to make them in a way that no one else in your field has seen so far in this case your paper will have a chance to make an impact and stand out at least in your field i recently saw a webinar by nature and i liked uh, one of the statements that they used they said that your research your figures should wow the reader and i like this statement because if you make a unique figure and readers and reviewers say wow you are in a great shape and probably your manuscript will have a high chance of being accepted speaking about developing unique figures for papers let me show you an example from my recently accepted manuscript i was working in the topic of aggregated flexibility in active distribution networks and of course prior to submitting this work i have read a lot of uh, papers in this field i saw many many figures but i never saw a figure of decomposing flexibility into components into different flexible units and i wanted to show this in my paper so i was thinking how can i visualize that and finally i found a way of showing this and let me show you this uh, figure from the manuscript you can see that uh, the aggregated flexibility is indeed decomposed into different coalitions of flexible units 
and I spent a lot of time trying to develop the style and the message of this figure. And you can see that this figure is quite complex, it contains a lot of information. And I remember when my professors first saw this figure, they paused for a second to analyze it, and then they said, yes, this is very interesting. And I think this is the result that you want to achieve in your manuscripts. You should try to develop unique, interesting figures. And uh, moreover, you should try to develop uh, elegant figures that show information in a concise way. This is not the best example of a concise uh, figure because it is a very big one. It has a lot of sub figures. But anyway, the message here is that try to develop new figures that no one has ever seen before. And then your co-authors, your reviewers, your readers, all of them will appreciate that and they will remember that you did something interesting in your research. And of course, this will help you to maximize your chances of being accepted in top IEEE journals. All right, so we discussed this problem of developing high quality, unique figures for the manuscript. Let me reiterate the main messages here that you should try to make your paper look professional. You should try to make uh, your figures unique. And also we discussed that people do not like to read text. So where possible, you should add figures to help readers and reviewers, not only reading text, but getting some additional information from your work. And talking about the problems with text, I would say that these problems begin as early as the introduction. Many reviewers uh, in IEEE journals complain about the introduction section and literature review. And I know this from my personal experience when I submitted my paper and also when I was a reviewer. I would say that in 90% cases, reviewers complain about the introduction. And this leads to the following conclusion that the introduction is not clear, the contributions are not clear, and therefore this work is not novel and probably should be revised or even rejected. And this is very bad uh, for your manuscripts, so we want to avoid that when submitting our papers to top-tier IEEE journals. So, again, let me show you example from my recent accepted paper. In this paper, I got many complaints from reviewers that the introduction was not clear, the problem was not clear, and uh, the contributions were also obscure. So, what I had to do after the review, I completely changed the introduction, and I want to show you how it looks like now. You can notice that starting from the second paragraph now, I say that this work demonstrates two major challenges. And then I discuss these ch challenges as bullet points. Challenge number one and challenge number two. And I even highlight these bullet points in bold so reviewers can easily see what are the problems discussed in this manuscript. So my advice here would be highlight the problems that you consider in your paper starting from the second paragraph and you can use bullet points or bold text to do this. And in my example, I used the first paragraph just to explain briefly the setting and then already starting from the end of the second paragraph, I said, here are the problems, problem one, problem two, here we go. And let me say that reviewers really appreciated uh, these modifications to the introduction because it became more clear to them what we are working on. Okay, but also in the introduction, you should uh, describe your contributions in a very clear way. And in many papers, uh, authors like to add uh, bullet points at the end of introduction to show, to highlight your contributions. And this is the thing that I did in my manuscript. So let me show you how it looks like. This is page number three, the end of the introduction. And you can see that I say specifically, the paper makes the following contributions and I list these three contributions and discuss them. Again, this all comes to the message of people do not like to read text. This is very boring, time-consuming, and reviewers and readers want to know the contributions of your work, and it will be hard for them to try to find contributions in the text. Therefore, the least thing that we can do here is to add these bullet points at the end of your introduction to guide readers and reviewers and show them what is specifically done in this work. So this is my advice about changing the text of the introduction. Now, let me say that this is uh, the minimum that we can do to improve our introduction and the literature review. Still, we can do much more. For example, we can compare our proposed work against the field, against existing works. And I know that many uh, scientists like using tables uh, for literature mapping. And let me say that even though these tables uh, usually help um, papers, I still don't like them. And I have an example for you why I don't like uh, literature mapping tables. So this is an example from a recent paper published in 2023, I believe. 
and you can see that even though the authors compare a lot of different studies, many references in the first column, this is a very complex table and we need to spend several minutes just to analyze it. So we discussed that people do not like to read text, but here instead of text you give readers a huge table which looks like a maze and again it's not very intuitive what is going on here and therefore adding such tables can work against you. So please be very cautious about using literature mapping tables in your papers. What else can we do instead of writing our contributions uh, and literature review as text and instead of using these tables? Well, I believe that one of the best ways is to visualize uh, the literature, map the relevant literature. You can do this, for example, using uh, citation networks where you interconnect uh, relevant studies um, to your field. And also, in my paper, I used so-called literature radar. Let me show you how this looks like. So, this is uh, the last page of my paper where I have this appendix mapping of literature and research directions. You can see that I identified five relevant research directions and then I say that uh, my research contributes to these directions differently and also there are three studies, um, in this case number 4, uh, 25 and 46, that are very close to my work. But then in the text I say that even though these works are very relevant and close to my study, still I make some different unique contribution to the field and I justify why. So my main message here is that you can help your reviewers and your readers to better understand your work, research gap and contributions by visualizing uh, existing literature in the field like I did in this paper using the literature radar. All right, by but why am I spending so much time on this uh, introduction section? Why do I discuss these tiny details? I want to tell you that the introduction section and the literature review is one of the major problems of all submitted uh, manuscripts in IEEE journals. And even in my case, even though I was working more than one year on this uh, manuscript, even I had negative comments about my introduction. And I want to show you these comments. Here is the comment from one of the reviewers during the first uh, round of review. And this reviewer says that although this paper touches an interesting topic, its current technical contribution is trivial and cannot be recommended for acceptance. This sounds quite tough, right? And then he says, first, please rewrite the introduction part. The current submission has too many contents already studied in the literature. So can you imagine that I liked my introduction, I thought it's quite clear, and this reviewer clearly indicates that he or she doesn't, doesn't like the introduction, do not understand what is new here. And they even say that the, the technical contribution is weak and the paper cannot be accepted. So I was quite discouraged by this comment. And I want to show you a comment by another reviewer uh, who says that the authors criticize that the existing work do not fully account for some mechanisms. However, I searched related studies in Google Scholar using these keywords and I found that there are many similar studies. The authors should carefully review existing studies and further explain the differences between the paper and the existing literature. Again, very similar comment. The reviewer doesn't understand the contributions of this work and moreover, this reviewer specifies that uh, he or she look uh, for similar keywords in Google Scholar saw some relevant studies and therefore doubt that my research is new. So I, I was lucky that I could uh, fix this, I could improve my introduction, I added this uh, literature writer, I resubmitted the paper and didn't get rejected. But uh, again, it's very dangerous to submit papers to top IEEE journals with poorly written re introduction and not enough justification of the uh, literature review done and the research gap. There are some other comments uh, from reviewers that I want to discuss with you. Many comments indicate the lack of understanding of basic concepts in the, in the work, in the modeling framework, and basically reviewers say that they need simple examples. In my original submission, the initial manuscript, I explained the problem, the model, and then I went to the main example that I wanted to show that was uh, a network with 33 buses and four flexible units. But still some comments by the reviewers indicated that they are completely lost and they do not understand what I mean by, you know, cooperation of flexibility providers and so on. So what they asked me is to provide basic examples. And this is another takeaway for you that if you have space and if you can, 
you should always start with very simple examples in your papers. So start with example like 2 plus 2 equals 4. Show that this works and then say we apply this into a larger, more complex context and it works as well. And this is what I did in the revised manuscript. So let me show you uh, the final version of the manuscript. Now, figure one of this work is a simple example of Minkowski addition. Look, look at this picture. It basically shows that A plus B equals this. And I explain in text that, yeah, this, this is the concept that we are using. And it works, right? And it's very simple. So the reviewers now can understand, okay, this is what we are talking about. Now, figure two is the same figure, but now I show how different components of these sets work. Again, I say that this plus this equals this, but now we, uh, we analyze uh, this specific aspect of the Minkowski addition, and we will apply this in the next example. And reviewers really appreciated these simple examples, and they were happy with that. So this is, uh, as I said, another takeaway that try to include very, very simple examples if you can to maximize uh, your chances of being accepted in top tier IEEE journals. Some other comments that I want to briefly discuss is that uh, reviewers sometimes are not happy about the details, the modeling details, the equations that you uh, show in the manuscript. What I want to say by that is that many reviewers really enjoy seeing uh, your results justified by certain equations. And if you do not show these equations, they can doubt your results and they, think, they might think that you are hiding something. And again, in my case, reviewers asked many questions about uh, my results, indicating that they do not understand the modeling assumptions, because in the original, in the initial submission, I used uh, simplified uh, notations to show my model. And let me show you what I mean. This is model one from my initial submission. You can see it's a very short model, just four equations. I wanted to save some space. And therefore I said that this is the model, we minimize this function, and then I say subject to these constraints. I, I do not write down all of these constraints, I just say this is power balance constraints, network constraints, some variables, and that's all. But uh, reviewers were asking a lot about the equations, they were not happy that many equations are hidden. So in the revised manuscript, I had to add the full list of equations to justify my modeling assumptions, and this is how the revised model looks like. You can see that this is a very lengthy model. It takes almost one column uh, of the manuscript, but again, the reviewers were happy with this and they were not lost anymore. So my takeaway here is that if you have space, if possible, please include all important modeling details, um, all equations that you have in the modeling section of the paper, because some reviewers would really like to dive into this. Another thing that I want to discuss about uh, the publication process in top tier IEEE journals is the need uh, for revision of your manuscripts after you receive the reviewer's comments. And let me first show you one interesting comment that I got from reviewer after I changed the work uh, once. So this reviewer says that uh, the paper's content has significantly changed after the initial submission. But I think it might be much better if the problem and the solution were presented more simply. So this comment has two parts. First, I believe that the reviewer is happy that I changed paper a lot. But still, even though there are massive changes in the manuscript, still the reviewer wants to see the problem formulated in a simple way, which again refers to the uh, improving the introduction, the abstract, maybe even the title of the paper. And regarding the revision of the manuscript, I want to tell you to not be lazy and make as many modifications as reviewers are asking for. Uh, in my case, I made really massive modifications and I want to show you that. My original submission was 10 pages long, but then I had to change the introduction completely, a little bit of abstract. I added simple examples plus new simulations and so on. And usually when you submit the revised manuscript, you highlight the modified parts in uh, blue color so you can see how many changes uh, I had in my manuscript, how many new pages I added. And yeah, I think this was a very challenging uh, review process for me because I had to modify a lot. Uh, so the takeaways here is that don't be lazy to change your paper a lot, add extra materials, especially reviewers can uh, enjoy if you add new data sets and new simulations, because in this way, in this manner, you prove that you are really a professional and you have your own models 
and if needed you can add new simulations so i highly recommend to make significant modifications to your manuscript if requested this will improve your chances of being accepted in top ieee journals and as uh, we discussed um, the last comment of the reviewer still when modifying the paper always try to present your material in a more simple way reviewers will really appreciate that okay we are moving to the end of the video and the last question that i want to discuss here is a very interesting question that i heard from some uh, colleagues usually young researchers who do not really like publishing papers and this question sounds like is this really my job what people usually mean by that is that they did a great job uh, developing models uh, simulations results they propose a great idea and they present this in the paper so is this really a job to improve the quality of the figures to um, tune these millimeters in the tables to improve the introduction and people basically are not happy that they have to do this all editorial work uh, to improve the paper but in my opinion i believe that yes this is this is your job this is my job this is our job to present our manuscripts in the best possible way because if we don't do this no one will do this and your figures will uh, will remain forever in this poor quality uh, your introduction will be if if published your introduction will be confusing forever so your research will not make as much impact as it could and therefore i really believe that this is our job to do all of these uh, stages and present our paper in the best way and here i have an interesting example we can compare writing a high quality paper with making a youtube video so imagine if i do not make a good quality video the quality is bad and i do not make an interesting title and thumbnail no one will watch my video and no one will like it and it will be useless therefore i try to make good quality videos and improve the thumbnails and so on and the same happens with papers even though you might have a very great idea in your paper if you do not improve the quality of your introduction and figures very few people will read it and will like it so yes i believe improving all aspects of publications is our job and one more thing here is i would say do not rush do not rush with submitting your manuscripts again i saw some cases where people were so nervous they wanted to submit uh, papers as soon as possible they didn't even want to wait one more day and this happens to different reasons some people want to get publication quickly some people are changing positions but if you do that you will be waiting three maybe six months to get decision on your paper and then since the quality of the figures or some aspects of your work is not yet improved uh, you might get a rejection which means that you just simply wasted these months of your work and your life and you should improve your paper and resubmit it again so don't put your paper at risk make another iteration another meeting with your co-authors with your professors to make a final discussion some final improvements as i said make your paper looking professionally and unique and only then submit it so uh, please do not rush with submissions in such uh, serious top tier ieee journals all right i hope that the aspects of publishing high quality papers in top tier ieee journals that we discussed today will be useful for your research we discussed many aspects today uh, that uh, the manuscript should look professionally that the figures should be unique we discussed the quality of the figures and also the concept is that the figures go first so you should be thinking about the structure of your paper in terms of the figures and what uh, figures and results should you display in different parts of your paper then uh, based on uh, my recent experience we discussed how important it is to include simple examples so please always try to start with very basic examples uh, at the beginning of your modeling or simulation section uh, do not hide any modeling details so if you have space try to include all uh, important equations so reviewers can analyze them and finally we discuss that yes it is our job to improve all of these aspects of the manuscripts if we want to produce high quality manuscripts and if we want to maximize our chances of being published in top tier ieee journals so let me know if you like the video and let me know if you have any other specific questions i can address them in the comments or even make another video about this topic and of course good luck with your ieee papers see you bye